Okay, team, I wanted to fit this question in. Um, this could have fit into a whole bunch of different sections in this class. We could have put this in an encoding section. We could have put this in uh, a section involving uh, writing and emergent writing. Uh, it could have been put into several different sections, but I wanted to include it because it includes the rabbit rule. And this is something that's used for um, two syllable words like uh, that have a vowel, constant, constant vowel. But the, the thing with the rabbit rule, it describes why uh, in words like uh, in, in words like rabbit and hiccup and uh, in wor and other words like uh, rabbit, hiccup, um, better, uh, ribbon, why we double the consonant, why there's a double consonant. So you can take a moment now, pause the video and read what the rabbit rule says. Um, Pause it at any time. I'm just going to sort of paraphrase it. When we have a word like, let's say, rabbit, and it has in the word rabbit, it has two um, closed syllables. So if we look at rabbit, there's a there's a closed syllable here, and there's a closed syllable here. When we have two closed syllables in the word, and the middle the middle of the word is a consonant a single consonant. So if we just looked at the sounds of the word rabbit, there would be a r, an a, a b, an i, and a t. So we have these two syllables that are closed, right? We have a ra, rab, an it, two closed syllables. And the middle consonant, the middle sound is a consonant. That middle consonant sound should be doubled when we spell it. That's why we double uh, the consonants in words like rabbit or ribbon or better or a word like this one right here, diner, right? Diner. We have two closed syllables. The middle, the middle sound is a, is a, is a consonant. The middle is a singular consonant. We double that letter to get diner. So that's why it's not, um, this right here. Okay. All right. This is this is um, if you were doing um, if you were doing decoding, you would use the VCE rule to decode it. If you're doing encoding, this is the rule to teach why why you use double letters for rabbit, hiccup, diner. Okay. Now, with this rule in your mind, let us go to that question that we looked at a little while ago, that was placed in the word identity the the word word recognition section and it involved uh, let me pull it up it involved a student right and this student uh was had a writing sample okay now if you remember this one uh you won't have to read it over but uh if you're looking at this for the first time uh uh this one right here from the 62 you may take a moment and pause me now pause and read it to yourself if you didn't read this uh, this initial prompt. It was part of another set. It was a, it was an earlier section of the class. Read it to yourself real quick and, uh, pause me now, read it. Unpause. Okay. So, so we, it, we looked at this one right here and we noticed in the previous question, we we're like, Hey, the student is writing very phonetically, right? This was an encoding question and they were writing very phonetically, which is true. Everything is uh, read, spelled exactly how it sounds. Rabbit is r a b it. So they were really using the alphabetical principle to to decode each of these words. But if you look at some of the mistakes they made in their spelling, rabbit, bragging, ribbon, right? Um, uh, better, right? These are all words in which the student uh, should have doubled the, the middle sound because that's what it says. When you have a word where it has two closed syllables, right? You take that middle consonant and you double it. That's the rabbit rule. So I'll say that one more time. When we have a word, uh, rabbit, right? Two closed syllables and the middle sound is a, is a singular consonant. When we're spelling out that word rabbit, we double the middle consonant to get rab, 
fit. And then we can use that vowel consonant consonant vowel rule to split it. Okay, now with that in your mind, in this case study in your mind, this is the follow-up question uh, that's attached to, to this case study. Let me pull it out. Here it is, right here. Take two minutes, read it to yourself, go. A good one, right? You probably need to read it again. Pause me and read it again. Okay, unpause me. This is from the reading specialist exam connected to that last question that we just looked at. The reading specialist could best use knowledge, so they're referencing the student's writing that we just looked at, and they saw the student made a lot of spelling mistakes with words like uh, rabbit. They sp they wrote rabbit like this. They did ribbon like this. They did better like this, they did, uh, you know, they're basically spelling the words phonetically and they don't know the rule involving doubling the middle consonant, okay? So it says here, the teacher specialist could best use knowledge of evidence-based progression of phonics skills and an analysis, analysis of the student's current spelling performance. So we're, we're looking at the, the analysis of these common errors in their spelling performance to conclude that the student is ready to be introduced to which of the following phonics concepts, or letter sound correspondence concepts. Um, so they made a lot of mistakes with these words. So is the issue, did they have a lot of issues with words with inflectional endings? Hmm? Inflectional endings? Did you see a lot of spelling mistakes with words with like ing, ed, um, s? Did you? I don't know, Chris, I, uh, let me go back to the question and see. Issues with inflectional endings? Not really, right? I, I don't really see uh, a whole lot of ing or ed here or s, is that right? I, I'm not seeing it. There's really no inflectional endings. Yes, am I missing it? I don't see any inflectional endings here. So that's not an issue based off of this writing sample. Okay, let's go to, let's go back. Uh, is it uh, uh, syllable stresses? Uh, syllable stress affects vowel pronunciation in multisyllable words, resulting in some vowels making an uh, indistinct schwa sound. Well, that's interesting. Syllable stresses affect vowel pronunciation, like in the word uh, turtle, right? Uh, resulting in some vowels making a distinct vowel uh, sound, a uh, schwa sound. That's referencing cons That's referencing, you know, words with you know consonant and uh, le, right? So, and it's actually uh, it should be um, it should be a relaxed vowel. So we're not stressing and making a long vowel in the pronunciation. Um, it's creating a, uh, a relaxed vowel, a relaxed sound, the uh sound in church. Oh, uh, oh, uh, schwa. Okay, no, none of these, last time, none of these are real, really involving schwa sounds. We gotta go check. Do any of these involve schwa sounds? Let's go see. Do any, uh, let me go find it. Any schwa sounds here? I mean, there is a schwa sound there, turtle. Okay, so yeah. So with turtle, there, there, yes, there was a spelling mistake with turtle, not as often as with words like better and ribbon and rabbit and bragging, right? But with turtle, there seemed there was there was a, a spelling mistake there. Um, but but here's why it's not turtle. Here's why it's not turtle. Because the syllable stress, it's it's not stressed, it's relaxed. Because of this, um, with this le constant le, it creates a uh, an open relaxed syllable, a schwa sound. So it's not stressed. It doesn't make that a sound. A, a it's not a. It's a. Uh, it's a relaxed syllable, not stressed. So so that one's out. That one's out. And then, um, do they need help with diphthongs? By the way, look at this definition of diphthong. I love it. Did they are they ready for the concept of diphthongs? Diphthongs are formed when the mouth changes position from one vowel sound to the other. 
like in oi, in boy, or oil, or or out, right? That's a, that's a great definition of a diphthong, right? Where they're, in this case, they're vowel sounds, and there's a changing in the position. So I like it. Uh, diphthongs are formed when the mouth changes position. Mouth, throat, tongue change position as we go from one vowel sound, oi, to the other vowel song, oi, right? This is an awesome definition of diphthongs. Uh, the only problem is, is the student's writing does not reflect uh, any diphthongs here. There's no diphthongs. See what I mean? So team, this is actually a really cool question because the answer choices are really detailed. Um, and you need to understand, and to get them, you need to cross them out, but you need to know what, what they're referring to. So A, B, and C are incredibly detailed wrong answers. Now, what's the answer? The answer is this one here. The medial constant is usually doubled in a word with two closed syllables and one medial constant, consonant sound. I'll say it again. In words like rabbit, this is the phonetic spelling of rabbit. The medial consonant, that's the B, is usually doubled to two Bs in a word with two closed syllables, closed syllable, closed syllable, and one medial, middle, constant sound. This is the definition for uh, the rabbit rule, which uses words like rabbit and ribbon and better. And, and it's your job to spot that. When you see words like, when you see words um, like this, when you see a case study, and it has words like rabbit, bragging, better, ribbon, and there are multiple mistakes using that rule. You need to be like, oh, that's the rabbit rule, right? And maybe the question asks it, maybe it doesn't ask it, but this is about the student's writing. So, so you know, it's floating in your head so that when you come across, if you ever did come across a question and they ask you, hey, what can you say about the student's mistakes with words like rabbit and better and ribbon? Oh, they need to learn the rabbit rule. You need to know what this rule is. Okay, team, this isn't that hard if you know the rabbit rule. So study it, team. It's a fun one and uh, good practice, okay? Uh, great practice if you're looking for a push. Uh, this is a good test. Good, Some really good push questions, okay? I hope you're enjoying this. Um, all right, let's wrap this section up.